Uh huh. Like, are you making it? Uh huh. Yeah. Hold on. Once you have that, then you will have clarity going into this weekend. And once you have clarity, you'll be able to take action. Good morning. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning, Sham. Good morning. Who said that? Let me see all faces and stuff. It's Tiffany. I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> Say it again. I'm still in my pajamas. I just woke up. Oh. Oh, I love it. Well, it's amazing happening. But I'm here. I love it. How's everybody doing this AM? Good morning. Are we ready to have an amazing conversation? Yep. I guess so. Yes. Okay, oh. but for the real question, what what are you all drinking? To, to fuel you for this conversation. What is that? Water? Hydro? Vodka. Coffee. Coffee? Yes. Coffee. Coffee, Mama. Water? Tammy? Um, coffee. Oh, got it. it it's, a, coffee. It, it's a Texas size mug. <laughs> Is it true that everything is big in Texas, you guys? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Except for mountains, because we don't have any of those. <laughs> yeah, we get big flat. <laughs> flat. I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to unmute you all. I think Sarah Novick's phone is, is going cray-cray. It sounds like she's opening a bag of chips, but knowing her, that wouldn't be the case. <laughs> Miss Ashley, how are you doing this morning? I am doing well. It's uh, it's finally raining, and I am drenched right now because I went from I'm I'm sorry. There's construction in our building, and I'm very sorry if y'all can hear it. Um, I wasn't expecting that, so oh, we can't hear shit. Okay, good. <laughs> The only construction we heard was, was Sarah Novick's meal prep. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can hear it really loud, so I was hoping you guys couldn't. But otherwise, yeah, doing good, doing good. Just chugging along, waiting for this weekend. So mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Um, give me just one second, you guys. I'm going to get set up. Get you all self set up and situated and stuff. Today's gonna be an amazing conversation. Who loves it when we have conversations with our very own community members? Raise your hand. I do. I know, those are my absolute favorites, to be honest. Because it seems real. Like you are a part of it, they're a part of it. It's like there, there is so much relatability. It is real. <laughs> I love it. Okay, hold on. A couple, a couple more people want to join us. Ooh. <laughs> you got anything to say, Sarah? What you got in that bag for me? <laughs> Carrots? No. Uh, Cherries. I think her. A frozen strawberry. You're a frozen strawberry. 
connection. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Today I have with me the total badass winner of none other but the third Raw Transformation Program. Please unmute yourself, unless you're Miss Ashley. Winner of the third Raw Transformation Program, Miss Ashley Thomas. Let's give, let's all give her a hand. Okay, so over a span of eight weeks, Ashley released eight pounds and nine inches off her total body. However, she gained so, so much in the process. And, and this is really the purpose of this conversation because the changes in your body are really nothing but a byproduct. Okay, so, you know, Ashley, when somebody like sees your photo and like, you know, like we talk about the, the results, right? All they see is the tip of the iceberg. They, they don't see anything with regards to your eight week journey. Now, you know, just like how we start every single conversation, it's really important to understand where it is that you're coming from. So what I'd like for you to start with is share with us today your journey of weight gain. Like, um, you know, how did you start gaining weight? At what age? And we'll take it from there. Okay, so everybody can hear me, right? We're good? So I've always, I had always been pretty small, maybe like a buck 15, buck 20, um, all through middle school, all through high school. You know, I played sports. Um, I was playing tennis. I was golfing. I was in theater. So I was doing dancing. Um, I was always pretty active. I could eat like three boxes of macaroni and not gain a single thing. And I did that often. Um, and then once high school was over, I no longer had uh, the sports because tennis is kind of a, it's not a, it's not a uh, individual sport. You have to play with someone um, to actually play. I mean, I can play against a wall, but eh. um, golfing I could do, but now it's no longer free because <laughs> the school used to pay for it. So now um, it became an expensive sport and I'm just graduated from high school. I probably, the only job I had was at Cracker Barrel and I was a host and this is back in 2004. So you didn't get paid a lot. Um, and I started working and being a shift leader at a pizza restaurant. Um, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, you got in a relationship, you get comfortable. I was in a three year relationship and that was toxic, but it was, I started to gain a little bit of weight, but it still wasn't too bad. So by 2000, I would say eight, I was still only like 125. Um, and it, I, I wasn't um, really all that upset about it. I could tell I was gaining weight, but it was okay because I looked like a skinny giraffe. Um, <laughs> I, I was too skinny in high school, I think. But um, once I hit about 25, my metabolism, even without me working out, just died. And I went from 125 to 150 to 170 to 180. Um, I've been pretty much at a consistent 200 plus for the last five years ish. Um, and that has been through several relationships, several depression uh, cycles um, after those relationships. Um, and I'm still no, now I'm golfing, but I golf in a cart, so that doesn't help. Um, so it's my, and I've, I've been on weight loss struggles. Like my pictures, honestly, it's nothing new for me. Um, I've, I've done that before. The only change now is that I have 
a good foundation to keep going before it was I lost like 30 pounds in a month and I was at the gym three hours a day every day um I wasn't I was eating like smart ones which are horrible for you but if they worked um and Isn't that a candy smart ones smarties smarties are the candy smart ones oh. are those little dinners those microwavable dinners um well i've never even heard of it it's kind of like lean cho is it lean choice or yeah like healthy, the lean yeah candy. those yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I mean i've done it before i didn't do it the healthy way and i definitely didn't purposely mean to lose 30 pounds in a month but I was working two jobs, still going to school, and working out for three hours a day, pretty much every day. So that all came back with revenge. <laughs> so it was like, um, so I, the last few years, I'm like, yeah, let's get this, let's do it. And then I'm like, eh, I don't feel like it. Um, yeah. Can, can I pause you real quick? I was just, I just had an epiphany as you were saying it. And you know, it's really cool to hear somebody else's journey because the first thing that I do when I hear somebody else's journey is, you know, I, I take notes and compare it to my own. Right now, I grew up playing sports as well. And if you grew up playing sports, and I believe most of you guys did, do you believe that you know the athlete mentality that you developed from a very young age could possibly have anything to do with an all or nothing mindset going into weight loss i mm -hmm. like thinking about my own experience i'm like because i was all or nothing for a really long time and it sabotaged me for 10 years do you feel like that that could contribute to you know your your yo-yo because you're like all in like gonna put everything i got however you don't have the habit so like you get burnt out and then like it, the cycle just repeats itself oh yeah like the um especially especially tennis it was um you got it i was captain so i i you had to like you couldn't slack so it was um it was always make sure you don't let the girls down make sure you don't do this you gotta do it you gotta do it push 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 make sure you know if you lose just make sure you don't like go on a bender or i mean not in high school but not that kind of bender <laughs> but um but yeah it's and then you get out of high school you're away from your coach you're away from your team um you're starting something new uh, you have that mentality. Um, I, I still, I, I didn't do good. I didn't do well in pretty much any aspect of my life after high school for about four or five years. Um, I, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty bad. I was failing out of college. Um, I, it was, it was not, it, everything just went sideways after i lost that niche at that group yeah. so it, it has a lot to do with your life in general yeah totally um i just want to do a quick recap for anybody who is jumping in so you know um when we started the conversation with ashley we you know like growing up you were what i would consider like actually really skinny right like i would use the word skinny to 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 define what you were before like you were 115 pounds you even called yourself what something giraffe yeah i just i had it was so skinny like my neck was so long mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like i looked really really like tall i wasn't but i looked tall yeah. um maybe and after this i'll find the pictures and i'll post them so you guys can see what i'm talking about but yeah Please do. And, and you grew up, you, you played sports um, pretty competitively too. By the way, shout out to, to you for playing tennis. I, I was a tennis player as well. Um, yeah. That's how I came to this country. But you know, once you were 18 and you, you finished with high school, basically, you know, um, you didn't practice sports like you did. And something that we always say 
is how you do anything is how you do everything. And, and trust me, like I, like the more I hear people's stories, like the more molded this becomes like in my own, um, just quote dictionary because like it, it's the truth. So now I want to point out two important things. Um, the biggest difference between the age of 18 and the age of 25, you went from basically 125 to over 200 pounds, right? Um, I would say at 25 was about 180. And then after 25, it started about maybe 10 pounds a year and then it just sort of stayed there. Um, yep. Because I was a server and I wasn't losing weight but I wasn't gaining it either because I'm walking around a lot. So it just sort of stayed at like the 210. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I want to bring up the importance of the environment in which you're in. So you, after high school, you now dissociated, right, by default because you graduated from an environment that pushed you to be better. Do you agree? Agree. So that's one. But then there were two. So a positive change was basically now shifted. And then there were two negative influences in your new environment. Okay. Along with the positive environment that was taken away. And that was the restaurant that you started to work in, right? A pizza restaurant. Of course, you know, working at a pizza restaurant, you don't have to gain weight. However, I believe that the only people who will not gain weight, and I'm saying this from my own experience, because I worked at, throughout grad school, I worked at a pizza shop. Um, but I went into it with a very strong <clears throat> discipline and I already had all the right habits. However, you know, if you're not taught that going into it, your environment shapes you. I mean, you know, like pizza, pizza, breadsticks, like pasta, we don't even need to get started. In fact, insert in the chat box your, your favorite um, Italian goodie, like cannolis, all these things, right? Like it's really easy to fall into that trap. And then you said that, you know, you also got yourself in, in relationships that, you know, didn't increase your standards either so you got super comfortable with you know the the mundane of you know life kind of just happened to me right so you fell into that trap right yeah yeah there's yes there's a lot to go into that and a bunch of other stuff too but yeah it's it was the the trap of the three-year comfortable relationship that just didn't do anything for me didn't uplift me, didn't motivate me, didn't do anything. Just, there's no point of being in that relationship, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If any of you guys can relate to, you know, being in a relationship that, that didn't raise your standards and perhaps maybe even like lowered it, write a comment. I wanna see how many of you guys can actually relate to this. Um, I know that I definitely can. Um, and, and ever since that one bad relationship, I, I, I swore to myself that I'll never date anybody unless their standards are equal to mine. And then I met Erin. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So now, okay. I, when did you start dieting per se? Um, I probably started around 25 so now it's um so I was going through I, I've already I would already ended that relationship and I was struggling because I was trying to accept a, a lot of different things at that time um and trying to find the community that was supportive was and not destructive, supportive, but not destructive was um, non-existent. So after, after that relationship ended, I came out-ish, 
itch is very particular. Um, and I started hanging out with a bunch of friends. I was in the bar Monday through Sunday, um, drinking all the time. And then I kind of just snapped out of it. Like I was over it, um, but I had gained a lot of weight at that time. So at around 25, I started going to the gym more often. Um, and that's pretty much when I, that three hours a day obsession. It was a, it, yeah, it was an obsessive um, mentality. Can I, I guess, can I guess what you did at the gym from sure. my own personal experience? You did two hours of cardio and then you did a little bit of, of isolation with weights for whatever body part you hated most. Uh, kind of. I didn't, I hate cardio. I hate it. <laughs> so I didn't do as much. Now, don't get me wrong. I was in the hour. I was in the gym for three hours. Didn't mean that I was going hard in the gym for three hours. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, so <coughs> I, I, I'd go to the gym. I would get on the treadmill just to warm up for a little bit. I would, I would do at that point in my area, CrossFit and any sort of hit work. They weren't a thing. Um, it, yeah. it, that didn't come until like the later 2000s. Um, but I did a lot of Zumba. Um, and my, my gym had a pool, so I did a lot of that. But I did do, I did do a lot of isolation workouts, all the machines. Yeah. Um, because I had no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> yeah. those were easy. You know, you kind of, as long as you read the uh, instructions on the machine, you could pretty much do what you needed to do. So I did that. And for about a month, it was working well. I was getting out my frustrations. Um, I was never home except to sleep. Um, if I slept. So that's, that started my whole horrible sleep. I know we talked about it during one of the um, coaching calls about sleep habits. Um, that started my sleep habit. So I, cause I was a caregiver at that time as well. I've never had really less than one job or sorry, two jobs. Um, so I was a caregiver. So I, I was there from nine to nine. Then I would go to the gym for a couple hours. Then I would go to school from 12 to whatever and then I would start over again so sleep was never really a thing and after a couple weeks I would crash uh, yeah. so it wasn't healthy but I was losing weight um I lost I got in another relationship because I was still hiding little little baby baby bisexual hiding in the weeds over there and um and got cheated on again so it was and then I went on a binge again so now I gained all my weight back so um so I was pissed and I was depressed <laughs> so um so yeah so that happened and it, it was a it was a cycle get out of a relationship depressed gain weight obsessive lose it and then got another relationship did the same thing about seven times so um, I am now just, just me and I chose this for myself, not because I was trying to revenge body or, um, just in a depressed mode, just trying to get my feelings out in a healthier way, even though it wasn't healthy because I wasn't doing it correctly. Sure. Um, so yeah. So it started about 25. It's been yo-yoing up and down um, for a good, I'm 30, about 10 years. So, yeah. So you were basically like very much like how I used to be. You were a pro yo-yo, yo-yoer. I dieter, but I think for you, the biggest thing is that like you were very, you didn't know much about nutrition. So you took it all out on your workouts. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I won't say I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I just took the faster way out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I knew what I should eat, but I didn't because I didn't care. I just wanted it to be gone quickly. 
So give me a, and if it wasn't vegetables, so it was like, um, cause I've always diet been, creamer, sugar free this, fat free that, yep. no added work. sugar ice cream. Yeah, they work. They're just also not good for you. So they work until they don't. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it normally works for, like you said, about 30 days. Um, and then it doesn't. Oh, this okay. is so good. Can you guys relate? Drop an emoji. Drop like a Flex Friday emoji if, if you can relate to this. I can relate to you, Mama, on so many levels. This is amazing. Okay, so basically, you know, going into the transformation, you've been a, a pro yo-yo dieter, right? Now, gold medal. I'm, I'm curious, how did you how did you actually hear about it? And what made you join that? Facebook. I have, face, ugh, Facebook is big brother. I'm not going to lie about it because <laughs> I would, I would just look or say something and all of a sudden something would pop up on, you know, like Facebook uh, ads and it was the um, rise above the 14 day mm -hmm. challenge and it was yeah. for free. So I was like, eh, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Cause at that point I was ready. Cause my, my dad, my mom is nice. She won't really say anything, but my dad says he, he's like, Oh, probably should, should lose some weight. I think at one point, and he wasn't trying to be malicious or mean about it, but he's called me a hippo. So I was like, Oh, wow. oh okay. <laughs> so at that point, um, I kind of started to, and honestly, I, in pictures, it looks really bad and I'm I'm looking at myself now and then I take a picture and I don't feel as large as I am in the picture and I know pictures tend to skew a little bit but um nobody was ever like you're not fat you're not this I mean I could get to 230 and it's because I carry it in my hoo-hahs and my butt um and some of it in my waist but I can hide that that's you know um so nobody was ever like, what are you talking about? But I could see it. And apparently my dad could see it. So, um, so yeah, so that was, that sucked. But I saw, I saw the 14 day challenge and I started with that. And then I got a call from Aaron. Um, <laughs> um, and she convinced me to do, hey, I told you. <laughs> I know. And you're like, I was, because at this point we had just lost, you know, I lost most of my income because I was no longer serving because they were closed. So right. I was like, ah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> but um, I, I canceled a few things. I canceled my um, DirecTV. I canceled um, my Netflix for a little bit. Uh, and I just put that money into the transformation. Um, because I had signed up, I think I signed up for the nutrition plan first, and you were like, no, 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 <laughs> do, do this, do this, this is great, and I do not regret it at all, I at love all, it. so, but yeah, face, Facebook brought me to you, so it was, um, and I, I was skeptical, because I know a few ladies here have done Lady Boss before, and I started that a few years ago, and I really, I liked it to, at the beginning, um, but then it got so large that there was, it started about, I think, I don't know how many people are in here now, but it started around 3000 and then I don't, it must be up to the 20 it's, it's high. So, and then it went from personalizing, you know, you kind of talk to a bunch of people, um, and then everything gets lost on the group chat and uh you don't get that one-on-one -on -one, and then you just sort of fall to the wayside and i canceled although i still have access to their app pretty sure that's not supposed to be a thing but <laughs> whatever <laughs> um so i did that um and this is just so much better like, there was none of this. This was not a thing in that group. And 
I I appreciate the community here. Um, so, yeah, that's my day. Well, well, we all appreciate one another, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's what you know. Your environment shapes you, right? right? Like it's it's invaluable what what these conversations do for each and every one of us. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the raw transformation and, and then I, I want to ask you a couple more questions simply because I'm curious, right? Because, you know, to be honest, like you see it in one way with, in the way in which it affects you, I, I write it out, right? So it's really cool from like sender to receiver to like hear about the experience, right? So it's obviously not the first weight loss program that you've been on, right? It's like, I mean, for 10 years, you've been yo-yo dieting. You said um, you did Lady Boss, the whole thing. What was different about the transformation? So what's different about this one is that you not only, I signed up for the VIP, so I did get the coaching call. Mm -hmm. um, that in itself, that option was different. Um, before any of the any of the programs I did, you didn't get that option. There was no option to kind of get feedback from your coach. Uh, they would say like a beach body or um, a few others. Yeah, email us. We will talk to you. It's probably not them, especially if it's a bigger you know, program, it's not going to actually be your coach. Kind of like when the president mails out letters, he signs his name, but he didn't actually send those out. So it's kind of one of those, um, kind of one of those things. Um, the information that you get, um, the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, packet that we got, the food, the uh, burn, um, burn zone, and um, the diary and the goals and everything like that. Now, I wasn't amazing at using those most of the time. I won't lie about it. I'm not very good. I tried to make it a mission to do it, and I would sporadically do it through the eight weeks, um, but I'm not, I wasn't very good at it, <laughs> but I'm still working on it. Um, but uh, even once you get it into your head, and the goals you want, it's really hard to get them out, especially when you have a community that you talk to once a week and you're around all the time. So even if you don't write it down, it's, it's in your head. I walk to the store and I'm like, ah, don't do that. Or you should probably go to bed a little bit earlier. And then you see everybody is not active. Um, <laughs> and you're like, yep, they're all in bed. I should probably go to bed. So it's, for me, it's a, <laughs> for me, it's definitely um, helped to have those, yeah. that push. Um, yeah. And the flexibility, like I was not ready for the burn zone and I'm not even sure if I'm ready for it now, but I'm doing it. Um, so I was doing the rise above and I did that the whole time. Um, every time I would start over, I would just go harder um, and make sure that I wasn't oh, just going at the same pace, basically, that I was last time. Um, I had the accountability partner, and I know a lot of um, a lot of programs have accountability partners, but at the beginning and even I tried to check up on mine. <laughs> um, she kind of disappeared after a little while, uh, even with me checking up on her, but I think she had her own things going. But um, even if my accountability partner, um, you know, was delayed, I had this group and you guys are very responsive. So that was, that was very, very helpful. Um, what else is different? Okay, so I want to ask. Uh, so, mm -hmm. for, I want to ask you a couple more questions. 
Mm -hmm. What was the biggest thing that you learned from that program? Like if there was one thing that you're like, it just, it flipped the switch. What, what was it? I think the, the biggest thing was that I could, I could do it. Um, that I could move past what I, I used, to, I was doing and used to know and listen to those who have been where I've been and take that information and apply it to my life. Um, food, that, that's, that'll always be a thing. Um, I, I know what I should do. I just never did it because it was hard. Um, so that, that was, it wasn't something new, but it was definitely something that I'm more consistent with now, but it's definitely, definitely been just the, the can do attitude. Like before I was never like, I can't really do that. And I'm just going to do it the easy way. And now it's the hard way. If you've ever done any of the workouts or, you know, cut out whatever poor habit that you've had, whether it's um, your sleep routine, whether it's food, whether it's um, a relationship that you shouldn't be in, um, friends, family, whatever. Um, habit building and habit breaking has been so helpful in this one. This I've never had um, a group who has helped me actually break my habits or build them. It's always been just stop it. Just don't do it anymore. Yeah. Like, don't face it. Run away okay. from it and hope that it never comes back to chase you. Right. Guess what? The bear will always stay hungry. <laughs> yep. He will always chase you. Yeah. Now, and, I, I, and I know it takes like, what is it, 21 days to break a habit and 14 days to build one or whatever that quote is. Um, do you guys want to? Do you guys want to know the truth about habits? It takes 66 days to get rid of a habit or to build one. Right? That makes sense. And that's according to studies, right? So like whenever a study is being done, right? Like, of course, they use average, right? The way that I, that I see it from my personal experiences that is the longer you've had the habit, the longer it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you to take it away Break it. Right. yeah so it, it really varies but you know what makes it vary the most is somebody's level of commitment but normally like you know studies show that it takes 66 days so um that's just a note for you guys okay so clearly now like your your mindset is shifted because you you truly believe that you can do it yes or no Yes. I obviously, I'm always going to have those uh, moments where I'm like, why am I doing this? Or um, usually that happens after I hear something, but um, I know how to kind of block myself off from that now, uh, re regardless of who's saying things to me or where I'm at or, you know, because eventually I'll be going back to my workplace and well my second workplace at the restaurant and I have a feeling that I'm gonna get they haven't changed but I've changed so it's kind of I just have to railroad just plow through all the let's go here let's eat this let's do that let's go out and drink ourselves to the toilet you know um I don't drink and I can't drink but it's one of those things I, I know that I can do because I've done it. And it's just going to have, it's going to be a little bit harder because I'm around people now because I started this in quarantine. So it's just me. Um, so yeah, so that'll be a little bit more blah, but we'll, we'll get there. I'll get it. Yes. And I have you guys. So. <laughs> you will, you, you absolutely will. So I want to talk about your ultimate goal real quick. Tell us about it. What is your ultimate goal? 
So it might be happening sooner than I expected it to. Um, oops. So my ultimate goal was to get healthy and in good shape to have uh, kids. And that was supposed to be next year. So it, it, it might happen sooner than I anticipated it, but my goal was to make sure that I was healthy enough to carry and healthy enough for my uh, baby after born, after it's born, and have the habits to get back to where I needed to be in order to give them a healthy lifestyle once they were not on breast milk. So, yeah. I love I got that. 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 That's amazing. Congratulations. Now, hey. go ahead. Shower. <laughs> Raise your finger when you're ready. Me? Yeah. Did you oh, see late? Baby, what? Yeah. My bad, guys. My bad. Um. <laughs> I thought you said wait. Oh, no. No, no. Go ahead. Oh, got it. Okay. So if you were to measure, right, like what's your health status or what your you know, abilities would look like in order to carry a baby, how would you measure that? Just so that we're able to kind of understand. I, I see what you're saying because I've had the pleasure of coaching you. However, for anybody who's meeting you the first time, like what do you describe to be the standard of somebody healthy enough to carry a baby? So scientifically and statistically, um, when you have a lower body fat content, and you're healthier, it's easier to conceive. Um, so right now, I've dropped a few more pounds, so now I'm at about 215. I would like to have my, you still obviously need body fat. It's just what you, you just have to for the pregnancy, but I would like to get down to we're at 35, I would say maybe 30 just to make sure that I have it's 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 attainable at that point for me um but mostly my nutrition that I don't want to sit there and eat a pack of Oreos while I'm five months pregnant or um like I watched I watched a few friends go through pregnancy and I can't tell you how many times it was just Oreo shake like a whole pack of Oreos and in a um <laughs> like a half a gallon of ice cream just put it in the blender and go like constantly um i don't want that i want i mean i obviously have a few treats but i want to have um the the healthy a healthy pregnancy so this this goal has been to reduce my body fat and to um and to get that healthy habit um, going through uh, the pregnancy so I can maintain it. Sure. So just, you know, speaking of numbers, just because I want to do a refresher, but, you know, most importantly, for those of you guys who are listening, you said, like, for you, if you were to measure it, that would mean sub 35 pounds, 30 to 35 pounds from when you started, right? Yeah, that would almost, so I started at 230, uh -huh. I'm at 215, Amazing. Um, I wanted to get to about 200 before I even started trying, and this, I wasn't actually trying, um, this is just, this is an oops, my bad, so it was like, um, uh, so that's what I wanted to do, um, but life sometimes happens but I think I can still decrease my unhealthy body fat and gain what I need to during pregnancy I think that's a thing I'm not really sure but I know some people still lose weight during pregnancy and some people don't I don't know yeah, absolutely absolutely 
Um, amazing. So basically things are on track and, and once you have that vision, things happen way sooner than you expect them to. Yep. <laughs> yep. Body. When you guys, when, when, so for one, you know, it, for anybody who's taking notes and, and you should be, by the way, you, you gotta be clear on your goal right? Like a big problem in this industry is that people don't actually know what they want. They just know that they're uncomfortable in the body that they're in. Until you have a clear vision of what your body needs to be at, you will always struggle because you're going to be led by a lot of distractions. You're never going to be focused and we all know what happens to us when we're not focused. We don't follow through. And also when we're not clear, we're no longer leading with our heart, we're leading with our egos. And that will never get you to where you want to be because your ego wants you to stay comfortable. Eat that ice cream, right? E you know, um, e eat that pizza, whatever, right? But you know, when you're very clear on where it is that you're heading, then you're, it becomes real, right? Like you have a purpose. So, so that's super important. Okay, you know, from your own personal experience, I wanna ask you some questions with regards to, to just like society and what's happening, right? And like the way that you see it and the way that you see, you know, your friends and like other people in your life. Like, why do you think women struggle with their bodies and weight gain and, try to achieve weight loss and it rarely ever happens so i okay forgive it i did delete it i promise but <laughs> so i've i downloaded tiktok um a couple days ago and before that you know i had this impression and not so much if I was dating a woman like in the, in the lesbian community, um, but in the hetero community, it's women tend to think that guys only want very small fit women. And on TikTok lately, it's not a thing. Like apparently men like curves and they state it clearly. But when when you go out into actual society, you don't see that. So I think women have this thing in their heads where they see something and they're like, yeah, they do, but then they go out into reality and it doesn't happen that way. Um, they, they struggle. So they're like, oh, they love me like I, I am, but no, they don't. So for me, and then every, every other, sorry, I'm going down, um, every other, um, you know, fitness site, or, you know, you have your Victoria's Secret, which I hate, by the way, um, hate that place, um, you have your Victoria's Secret models, or, you know, things like that, the only amazing, she's so beautiful, um, Ashley Graham, she is stunning um but they people even had issues with that so it's kind of it's just discouraging and I think just women have body issues because because of it um and then self-esteem comes in with it too and depression and um what kind how you're treated um right now we have a lot of movements going around and I don't think most of them are being handled correctly uh, on either side. So it's um, whether, whether it's racial or uh, based on sex or, or um, lifestyle or anything like that, nothing's going correctly ever. It's just not. And that, that's a history thing. And it's just going to keep going like that because people don't learn from history ever so that's my 
that's my take on that. And it's not a very popular opinion. I've lost quite a few friends over, especially the racial stuff, because I I was going to school to be uh, to go into law enforcement. So I have two very different, I have different views on it. Um, not that I don't support, it's just different. And they didn't like it. So, yeah. A lot, a lot of stuff. So, so I, I actually do want to get into that selfishly because I'm curious and I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. And I know that most people for one are not the biggest problem in society is that self love is not taught. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is this comparison analysis and I truly believe, and this is from my own personal experience as well, that as women, we, our natural tendency is to comp compare ourselves to others. Unless you're being taught the skills and given the tools to compare yourself to who you were yesterday or the, the, a few people who actually really inspire you and you're headed that way because you, you're clear on your vision, right? Like mm -hmm. comparison doesn't matter. And I agree with you 100%. I know, I remember growing up when I struggled, right? Like, I struggled because I tried to fit into the mold and I'm very different. I'm Middle Eastern. Um, you guys haven't met me in person yet, but like I'm, I'm very short, right? Like I know that my attitude makes me seem bigger than I am because maybe my biceps are big too, but I'm very small, you guys. Okay. So like, you know, like I remember growing up, like the ideal was a Britney Spears or a Kate Bosworth in Blue Crush. And I'm like, my, my little, you know, like short, Middle Eastern, hairy, like fat little girl. I'm like, how am I ever gonna try to get that? Meanwhile, Kate Bosworth has one, one blue eye and one red eye. I'm like, <laughs> right? So, 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 then, so then we compare ourselves and then it manifests in, in, a, in a very self-destructive way. Mm -hmm. right. So the question that I want to ask you next it is completely off topic, but because this is a current event and I'm curious, right, because I believe that the only answer is love. And, and the reason why people are always going to, you know, have battle with one another is because they don't truly love themselves. So they try to empower their, their own self by bringing other people down because it makes their ego feel better. So now, you know, tell me a little bit more about your experience with law enforcement school and, you know, what your opinion was and what was uh, the other people's opinion. What's so I graduated with a bachelor's in criminal justice um, after Not about seven, seven different major changes. Um, I'm sorry, it's really loud. Uh, and I broke my ankle. So I never actually got to the academy because my ankle right now is just not strong enough to go through it. Um, I have obviously both sides. I was adopted, so it's little old me and a whole sea of Caucasians and my brother who is Asian. Um, I never had the experiences that a lot of the African-American community has or has had or sees or thinks they might have. Um, I've, I've never had that. I've been pulled over multiple times. I've talked to tons of law enforcement officers. I have tons of friends um, who work in law enforcement um, and public safety in general. So I didn't, I don't have that, that basis. I see things going on, but I also, I do know how they're trained and how things can get out of control real fast. Law enforcement um, officers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of times that has nothing to do with someone's race. I'm not saying some of the times it, it doesn't because I know that there are officers who have issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are places that I go into now, even though I don't, I've never experienced that. Like I don't, like a city, and I'm like, yeah, let's not go there. Um, and uh, about 30 minutes away from me, we have, at least for Michigan, we have the president of the KKK, that's where he lives. And I'm like, mm, 
I don't want to go there either. Sure. So, so I've, I have those experiences, but I don't have, I don't have the blatant like racial or racism experiences. So, um, it's hard for me to completely see where people are coming from because I haven't had those, but I have seen them. I, especially with this charged culture in the last couple of years, um, I, I definitely understand, like I get it. Uh, but I also support the blue uh, and I always will. Um, do they need better training? Yes. Do they need different training? Yes. Um, but I don't, I was not out at the protests. Um, one, because they get out of control really fast and I don't want to be in that. Two, um, they tend to start out well and well, well meant. And I don't, it's not how I want to say that. Um, they tend to be well meaning and they try to get their uh, point across, but it never, it doesn't seem like it ever ends that way. Right. So I feel like people think protests are the way to go. And to an extent, I think they're right, but we got to try something different. Something, something has to, to shift. Um, and I don't, it, I don't necessarily, it's not just on the racism thing. It's on everything. You know, you've had, um, we've had, I mean, gay pride started as protests. So it's kind of, I mean, now you have gay pride and a bunch of other things, but people are still very, standoffish a lot of the times um and don't understand and i think that's still the way we're going for uh racial and that i don't care if you're middle eastern i don't care if you're asian i don't care if you're black i don't it's it's all about race for people and exactly lauren no they no education they need to be everybody needs to be educated on it yeah you're right you know i the truth is, is that everybody has opinions and we can't, we can't change anybody else. The only person that we can change is ourselves. And I truly believe that, you know, the biggest problem that is now apparent in the world is that for one, there is lack of good leaders, right? Um, and because of that, everybody is seeking for some sort of external validation mm -hmm. from from somebody else but here's the thing when when you're confident about who you are and when you truly love yourself then it exploits in any other area of your life so mm -hmm. i truly believe that it's it's a manifestation of self-hate so people are try, like like they're like lobsters in a pot they try to bring the other lobsters down Right. Um, instead of bringing them up. But I think that until there will be a shift, right, in leadership in the world that will preach that, right, it, it, it's always going to be a problem. But I, I know that this is a, a little bit off topic. However, this is something that I'm truly passionate about because Erin and I have a very big mission, you know, um, and you know, our, our goal is to really help the world in a massive level. And, you know, the truth is, is that we all need one another because us two alone, there's no way in hell we're, we're ever going to like rise to the top. We need each and every one of you guys to support us, right? Like we all need each other, right? Otherwise, I mean, it's, it's just nothing will move forward. So that's that. Okay. So you know, let's get back to you real quick and your goals. So, so once you, you got super clear on where it is that you want to be, things happen to you super fast. I mean, right now you are 10 weeks into your journey because you realize that after eight weeks that it's, it doesn't just stop there. The pot of gold mm -hmm. always keeps moving, right? And you're in it for the long haul, which is amazing. And by the way, each and every one of you guys should be, right? Like we're all in it for the long haul right um 
So in 10 weeks, you're now down 15 pounds. And do you know how many inches? Um, I haven't, I haven't measured since the day that. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm still, I think I've done a little bit more, but yeah, I haven't measured since then. So probably like 10 inches and 15 pounds. Things are moving really fast. Where do you see yourself 10 weeks from now? Well, we'll see. <laughs> could be prego, could not be. Um, but I'm hoping to get down to, let's see, 15. I don't know, another five. What? You'll be at 200. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not, because okay. my, my ultimate goal before this started was 170. Um, just pound goal. Um, that may or may not be realistic. I tend to gain a lot of muscle and um, lately. It never used to be a thing, it used, but I never really was concentrating on gaining any muscle. Um, but I tend to gain quite a bit uh, faster than I tend to lose fat. So, uh, so it's kind of um, relative. So I'm not really focused on um, the poundage anymore because I know that even if I get to 170, it might be too much. Um, instead of because now that I'm, I'm gaining the muscle uh I could be at 170 and I just am too skinny so yeah. so yeah so I'm not really focusing on quite a bit but I do know that I can lose enough weight and fat to get to 200 and below so I love it I love it so for you at this point it's not that you know that you can, it's just a matter of when I get there, like I will reassess and see like how I feel and how I look and what do I want to do from there, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Love it. So, you know, last question for you, if you could give any word of advice to any woman who is seeking some kind of bodily change, what would that be? Listen to your body. Like if you feel like you um can't sustain what you're doing or or you feel like you can push a little harder or um your needs aren't being met like you aren't meeting the needs for your body listen to it and adjust it because that is the only way that you're going to be able to sustain a weight loss you might be able to drop it you know, without doing any of that, but you won't be able to sustain it. And it's, um, uh, like right now I'm still, I broke my ankle and that was five years ago, but it was, I never, I didn't strengthen it like I should have. So now I'm dealing with it and I'm not, and it sucks. So I could have been on a much healthier level years ago and now, if I would have listened to my body and do what I needed to do for that one body part. So, yep, that's, that's how I feel. I love it. Listen to your body. You're, you're so right, you know. And I know that the, the way that we do it, no my fitness style, no macros, no, no. calorie counting. Because the concept is listen to your body, mm -hmm. right? Don't get distracted by your Apple iWatch and, you know, validate yourself based off of how many calories you burn or how far you're off your macros. No, it's all distractions that are going to only lead you to pain and frustration, mm -hmm. right? Um, amazing. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story and all of your, you know, wise words with us. Like, Here's the thing, you guys, the reason why I love bringing you guys on, right? Like when you have achieved something that needs to be talked about, you will be recognized because here's the thing. Everybody has a story and your story has to be shared, right? And Ashley's like, oh, I don't do well in interviews. I'm like, I'm like, we're just having a conversation. You did great. Do you think that she did great today? Thumbs up. See, you yeah. freaking crushed it. You crushed it. Like, you know, you're all so amazing and you all have so many good things to share. You just, you know, you need to give yourself 
a chance and you need to give yourself enough time and discipline to just follow through. But your own story is unique than anybody else's and it, and it has to be shared. So on that note, you guys, I, we, I wish each and every one of you guys an incredibly unique, powerful, um, confident weekend full of love and most importantly, self-love. Stay fresh, stay fly. We will check you on Monday at 6.30 a.m. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for showing up. Bye. Bye.